Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. We are continuing our series on rebuilding this magnetic sign chuck. This pin or this cam has the handle on the outside and actually activates this lever. And it's worn out too. The shaft is worn out here. It's all rusted and pitted here. But we've got to get these measurements. And that's what I want to talk about right now. This part, we have to have enough room for it. And there's two ground surfaces here and then another set on this side. And that's what keeps the magnet in alignment when it shifts. And I've got this ruler spanning these two surfaces just to kind of get an idea of how much room we have in there. We have quite a bit in my opinion because we also milled this back. I'm going to take advantage of that and make some things a little bit thicker. When I milled this out I did find out that there was a bearing in here. I hit something hard, harder than the casting. I ended up having to look at it a lot closer and pressed out a bearing and put in a larger one. And the reason I did that is I wanted to get as much surface on this as possible because this definitely was a weak point. Also that the other bearing in here was steel, so it was steel against steel, which I never think is a good combination. You don't want two similar, how do I want to say, hardnesses rubbing against each other because they're going to fight and battle and gall each other. And in this case that definitely is what happened. We're going to go in with some really tough steel here. I'm not exactly sure the steel I'm going to use, what type it is. All I know is it's really tough and really hard to machine. So I've got to make this shaft larger. We're going to keep this pin around the same size. We're going to try to tweak it a little bit larger, but let's see what happens. Let's do some measuring because it is a challenging part to figure out. Now normally, you know, to measure this, that's no big deal. But actually, let's do this first. Let's lay out some lines. So this is our part right now. And we're going to have to make some measurements. We need to know how wide this part is, how long we're going to make this shaft. And we're going to oversize a lot of this. And remember how this handle fits on here? Well, the distance here is going to be very important. We're also going to remake this because we're going to make it larger. We're going to make this pin also longer. So I want to get, I just want to beef it all up because it definitely is a weak point of this whole machine. Need a measurement there. We need a shaft size here. I already know what that's going to be. 0 0.505 because I pressed the bearing in here and then reamed it out because I wanted to get it perfect. Next we have to find out to have a center line and we need a center line for this one also. Get this measured correctly is going to be a challenge. We're going to need an overall size for this. The other reason I milled out the inside was so I could just make this a big round circumference. I want to have as much surface inside there as possible. So let's just take some information here. Like again, these parts are rusty. We're going to give that dimension there 0 0.200. Again, I just, I don't have to be perfect. I can always check it back in the lathe and readjust it. Let's go 0 0.950. The distance here, like I said, we already know. The overall, about one and a tenth. Let's see, how far can we take it? One and a quarter. 1.50. So an inch and a half. For that dimension. The pin length here is about 200. We're going to make it 300 because we can always make it shorter. How are we going to measure this distance here and measure off that cam? Now one way we can do it is we can put it in a V block and take a plus and minus measurement. And I tried to do that, but this part is so worn out 
that it really didn't work well. So what I want to do is clamp it in to the C5 holder. So now I can just measure it, measure it. It's rotating, it's taking out my margin of error. Let's bring this up. Just going to kind of get a feel for it. Zero, zero, pull this out, lower this down. Come down here. And what this, these numbers here are actually counting a plus and a minus in inches per rotation. The original reading I've come up with is actually 0 .400 seemed to be my average reading. But I just wanted to show you guys how I came up with that cam measurement. This should be a real fun part to make. Nothing too complicated until we turn around and have to do this cam. I'm working on the closing lathe. I like this lathe because I can do some deep, heavy cuts. As you can see, I've got a large piece of material in here. It's an inch and a half. The reason I picked this material because it is super hard. It's a very tough material and I can see this part's going to need it. What's going to happen, we're going to turn this shaft down and then we're going to cut it off, turn it around, and then I'm going to show you the trick on how we're going to cut that last pin which, is, which is, of course is off center. So I took the material out, cut it off, and now we need to put it in here. Well, we've got some challenges. For one thing, these jaws, when tightened in, will not clamp around a half inch. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a collet block. Now, if you haven't seen a collet block yet, I've got a video on that, and I'll put a link in the description on that. I've got a half inch collet in here. Just simply slide it in. We'll tighten it down, and then we'll chuck this in for jaw chuck. I'm going to take this over the vise, make sure I get it good and tight. There we go, nice and simple. Let's pull these jaws out a little bit. Okay, now we have to get this offset. And how do we do that? Well, we know when we measured it, it's off four hundred thousandths, four thousandths, four, almost a half an inch. How are we going to set that up? It's just like indicating except and try to get zero all the way around, we have to have a high, pot, high spot that is 400 thousandths. I have a feeling I'm going to be futzing with this for a while. So now I've got zero, zero. If I turn this, I'm going to watch the second dial and we're going to see if it can come up to four. So we're missing it by about 20 thousandths. So we're over by about four thousandths. I'm going to leave it there. I think that'll be close enough. I think I could drive myself crazy on that. So let's start turning this. So 
I have to say it's a little interesting to be cutting on this. One of the things I wish I would have done was put this inside the collet chuck further. Um, but I didn't, so I'm making a lot finer cuts. I just don't trust that half inch shaft. I know it's actually strong enough. I just don't have confidence in the way this is working. That's more about my insecurities than the problem of the machine. Well, I'll say the new part does not look like the old part by any means. Um, actually, thank goodness. But it looks great. I'm really happy with it. I've got a slight little radius in there, slight little radius in there. That'll help it from snapping off. Overall, I'm really happy. Let's go to that next part. I hope you guys have enjoyed this last video. There's still a lot more to come. We've got some very cool milling work to do on this, some unique lathe techniques measuring techniques. As you can see in that first video, there's a lot of stuff that has to be done to this magnetic sign chuck to get it back into shape. So I want you guys to stay tuned. If you like this video, please give me some thumbs up. Also leave some of your comments. And until next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks.